Google is the most visited website in the world. Some might say for a majority of people, everything starts at Google, whether you're searching for something to buy or simply trying to get some information. In fact, as of January 2022, Google holds 91.9% .9 of the market share for search engines, with 8.5 billion searches being processed per day and 99,000 searches per second. A whole lot of us aren't just using Google once either, but multiple times a day. In 2019, studies show that 84% of respondents use the popular search engine three times a day or more. Also, in a 2018 report by Salesforce, they discovered that about 87% of shoppers began their journey for a product through online search. And if the data mentioned earlier tells us anything, it most likely started with Google. So with all this Googling going on in our lives, it's no wonder that our brains are finding themselves lost in what is called the Google effect. Also known as digital amnesia, this is the tendency for people to forget information relatively quickly, even after just having searched or learned something, due to the high reliance on technology or a digital device. So when does this happen? The Google effect is quite prevalent in our modern times, with smartphones, iPads, and computers all around us. A simple example can be seen when you're searching up a word and immediately forgetting what the word meant not too long after. The effect can also manifest itself in our lives beyond just search alone. The Google effect happens when we rely on technology or digital tools to save important information. For example, these days we store all our important passwords on programs or browsers, having easy access to it at any given time. This ease prevents us from having to remember the passwords in our heads. While convenient, what ends up happening on unlucky days is that we end up never remembering what password we put and potentially getting locked out. The same thing can be said about phone numbers. According to a study, more than half of Europeans were unable to recall their partner's phone numbers, and this was no different with Americans as one third of Americans were lost suffering from the same effect. This case of digital amnesia is ubiquitous and is most likely experienced by everyone that has and relies on a smartphone these days. Think about it. When was the last time you remembered any phone number? Can you remember a loved one's number right now? So where does the Google effect come from? The term was first coined and came to light in 2011. In a popular paper by Betsy Sparrow and Jenny Lowe with references to the work of Daniel Wegner, the researchers carried out four individual studies that looked at how our memory worked in a world of Google. From the results, they discovered that in an age of computers, people were more primed to entrust their information into digital devices, expecting access to it at any given time. This expectation and reliance lowered the likeliness of them relying on their own brains to remember, and thereby lowered the rate of recalling the information itself. So why does this happen? When our brains are processing information, it tries to filter in and out what is worth remembering to reduce cognitive overload. To help prevent our minds from feeling overwhelmed and making use of the memory load we have, our brains leverage technology as a sort of external memory drive to store the things we deem as not worth our attention. It becomes part of what social psychologist Daniel Wegner hypothesized as transactive memories. This memory system is one where groups store and retrieve collective knowledge together, developing a sort of group mind. By storing your individual memory and the memories of others across multiple people, members of that group can have access to a pool of knowledge greater than anything a single individual can have access to on their own. As Betsy Sparrow wrote in her paper, this is an adaptive use of memory, to include the computer and online search engines as an external memory system that can be accessed at will. So, how can we prevent this Google effect? In this digital age where everything is dependent on a computer of some form, it can be hard to completely avoid or prevent the Google effect from happening, especially even more so as remote work becomes normalized. Communication, business, socialization, and general interactions all happen through technology these days. And honestly, there's no denying that digital devices make everything convenient. With that being said, however, it's important to remember that digital amnesia stems from an over-reliance on the technology itself. So, while there is no way to completely avoid the Google effect, what we can do is remind ourselves to sit and reflect on whatever information we learned or discovered consciously and actively. 
using digital tools to help us get things done is great for productivity, but it should not be a reason to create a strong sense of dependency. By being more conscious and aware of this process, we can hope to rely on our brain more and nurture the memory systems that lie deep inside. The Google effect is just one among many cognitive biases that exist out there, affecting how we make decisions. If you'd like to know how these cognitive biases affect our behaviors, watch the video on the left, and for more videos on topics like this, subscribe and watch the playlist to the right.